What is good, STV gang? Welcome to another Elden Ring video, and today we're gonna cover every single legendary armament or weapon in Elden Ring and how to obtain them. If you're like me and a collector of the obscure, then look no further, my fellow tarnished. As we jump into where you can find all nine legendary weapons in the game, uh, these are listed as legendary quality, so be sure to like this video, drop that comment, hit the bell, and you better subscribe for more content. Now without further ado, let's begin with number one on the list, the deadly and ominous Ruins Greatsword. This one is obtained earlier in the game. The Ruins Greatsword is a strength and intelligence based sword. It is legendary in quality like I said and can be acquired from a secret encounter at the Redmain Plaza, uh, Redmain Castle Plaza, sorry. This location is near where the Star Scourge Redon fight is initiated. After beating Renala, Queen of the Full Bitch, I mean Full Moon, Travel back to the Red Man Castle Plaza in Kaelid. There will now be a duo mini boss fight with a misbegotten warrior and a crucible knight. Just do your best, you know, it's not it's not too difficult. Get used to the misbegotten as for some reason they're a popular type of enemy you need to be killing for a lot of weapons on this list. So kill them to receive the Ruins Greatsword. The stat requirements on this beast is 50 on the stir, pretty hefty on the strength, and 16 on the intelligence, so not too bad there. It comes equipped with a wave of destruction unique skill. Raise the sword up high, then strike it against the ground to fire off a wave of gravitational force. Now, although it can be obtained early, that 50 strength is pretty hefty and you won't be able to actually wield it until later on in the game. And if you like the idea of pulling your foes closer to within striking distance, this may be that want for you. So, moving right along to number two on the list, we got the Eclipse Shotel. Shotel. I really don't know, but uh, regardless, this is a faith and dexterity based curve sword. Again, legendary in quality. I'm not going to announce that everyone. You get the idea. It can be found in the Church of the Eclipse within Castle Soul in the mountaintops of the Giants region. You will need the rolled medallion to access this region of the map, so it's kind of mid to late game. It can be obtained as you progress the story after beating Morgoth the Omen King and finishing Landell the City of Absolute Trashy Nightmares. <laughs> Seriously, this place is a pain in my ass. So, like I said, this one's about mid to late game. Uh, the stat requirement on this Eclipse Hotel, hooked little beastie looking thing. 10 on the strength, 25 on the dexterity, and 30 on the faith, so it's pretty faith heavy. Um, for any kind of faith, battle, mage, damage build that, you know, you want to throw in a little, splash a little bit of melee. Comes with a unique skill, Death Flare. Basically setting this thing on fire with what they call uh, <coughs> the Prince of Death's Flame. So cool. Causing the weapon to inflict the death ailment on foes to use this skill twice in a row will cause the Shotel to be slammed into the ground, triggering an explosion of death. Basically an AoE that inflicts death ailment. So that's pretty secretly broken, if you ask me. It can be buffed up based on whatever talismans you're wearing, whatnot. So anyways, up next at numero 3 is the Notorious Grafted Blade Greatsword. It's a colossal sword in Elden Ring. Grafted Blade Greatsword scales primarily with dexterity and strength. 40 strength with a C scaling, 14 with the dex with an E scaling. In order to obtain this macabre, intimidating piece of craftsmanship, you'll need to travel to Castle Morn in the Weeping Peninsula and defeat the Leona Misbegotten. Get used to the Misbegotten folks, because you've begotten to be fighting a lot of these on this list. Terrible, I know. For some apparent reason, I don't know. This brutish weapon comes with the Oath of Vengeance Ash of War, which increases all attributes by 5 for 30 seconds, as well as buff to poise. That can be pretty beneficial. A pretty simple beast of a weapon to get, and well worth the time. So, that brings us to number 4. The Sword of Night and Flame. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the nine legendary class armaments, so since it's technically one of them, it had to make the list. But by now y'all already know what it does or did prior to being nerfed thanks to an entire community making Elden Ring too easy with builds centered around this weapon. Early on in the release of Elden Ring, this, this weapon was just absolutely ridiculous. It cheesed bosses, you know, you didn't, you basically just built your character around this weapon and PVP, everything, it was a total shit show. Slaughterhouse. Anyways, if you haven't heard about this, do you even tarnish? Well, 
Regardless, this uh, epic, sleek looking mage blade can be obtained north of Liurnia in Carrier Manor within a chest in one of the lower towers. I'm sure there's still a use for it, but at this point, I don't need to really explain much. You guys can do your searches on this one. It's purely for the achievement for all those collectors out there trying to get the legendary achievement. So moving right along to the next one on our list today. Forgive me, but I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. Number five, we got the <coughs> Marais. Marai, Marai, Executioner's Sword. This sword is a strength and arcane based weapon. And yes, another great sword because they womp and look the coolest or from software has a two-hander fetish. Who really knows at this point? In order to obtain this hunk of iron, you will need to defeat Elmer of the Briar in the Shaded Castle located in the Altus Plateau. So we're about mid game here. It boasts a very powerful, chargeable unique skill that lets off a corkscrew style of attack I, again i'm gonna butcher this eocades orchades orchades dancing blade uh, is the name of it and the damage is based on total attack rating so it's interesting to see like a unique skill that scales with an attack rating um they're very few and far between so using things that boost your ar will increase its damage significantly for example, using the Wing Sword Insignia, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and Millicent's Prosthesis are just one of the th like few just off the top that you could use to help boost the power of this skill, since each strike of the corkscrew is considered an attack. So for the stat requirements on this thing, um, it's pretty sexy looking. We got 24 on the Strength, 14 on the Dexterity, and 23 on the Arcane. Unleash your bottled up anger with this weapon like a cork in a wine bottle, folks. Yeah, I'm bad. <laughs> That leads us to the next one on our legendary list, and that is the Dark Moon Greatsword. This is a unique legendary armament as it can be missed very easily if you don't follow or complete Ronnie's quest line. So for the sake of major spoilers, if you wish to obtain this, then seek out Blyde to initiate the quest line for now. We will just stick to the stats and why this is one of the more powerful weapons on this list. By the way, Blyde is that like, I'm sure you've seen the pictures, but just to like refresh, he is that wolf looking assassin, 12 foot warrior, sick as foot character. So just Google him. All right. This ominously simple looking oversized icicle with a hilt is very flexible on the builds. It works with mainly because it's dex and stir scaling are at a fair D rating on both to start, but also scales with int at an even higher C rating. Having that third scaling option is huge in being as how they are the three or main core stats of any elven build. It's suitable to have in anyone's arsenal to play with at least, at the very least, so it definitely favors a combat mage build. Based on this scaling and the fact that it requires 38 int while only needing a meager 16 strength and 11 dex uh, to wield, but its Moonlight Greatsword skill allows you to charge up this blade with magic and shoot arcs of freezing terror from a moderate distance at your enemies. And with the ability to inflict freeze, this is an all around excellent weapon for any build that is focusing on int, but wanting to swing some sharp sticks as well. Yeah, I hope you're hungry for the next one on our list because uh, up next, we got number seven, the Devourer's Scepter. Yeah, I actually just found out about this one and uh, it's a great hammer or a war hammer in Elden Ring. Scales primarily with strength, dex, and faith. Now this one can be achieved early or later in the game if you missed it. The first and earliest method of obtaining this hammer and by far the easiest would be by committing homicide on night, recusant, burnal. Uh, the War Master Shack around Stormhill. He'll be posted up trying to sell you some mediocre ashes of war, buy them out if you have the money, if not, you're not really missing much. And then you can easily kill him and he will drop it. Then, if you miss it, during the late game, in the crumbling Faramazula, you'll have another chance to get it by killing him when he decides he wants to invade you as an NPC invader. No, you can't kill him at Volcano Manor, so I'm sorry y'all, that's kind of like mid-game. Um, he does help with the Volcano Manor quest line, so you're gonna want to do that quest line. You get some pretty epic stuff, including the Raging Wolf armor set, but we're gonna leave that for another video. This hammer requires 24 strength, 20 dex, 25 faith, so yeah, this is probably once you're wielding this with a stat spread like that, that's like over, that's what, 69 <laughs> stat requirements across the board, so it's gonna be definitely later on in order to wield it properly. Uh, it scales accordingly to all three stats with a D rating across the board, so that's pretty nice. It's a weapon skill devourer of worlds, allows you to smash the ground in an AoE-like fashion, damaging nearby enemies and stealing their HP, so pretty uh, pretty nice for a vampire build. 
Not bad in a pinch if you're low on pots and a great two for one while still damaging multiple enemies at the same time. So, we're getting near the end folks, we got number eight up next. A luxuriously illustrious legendary armament called the Golden Order Greatsword. Yep, another damn greatsword. Seriously, what the fuck? This is definitely a later game weapon that requires majority of the game to be explored and story progressed, but the Golden Order Greatsword is a strength, dexterity, faith based weapon and can be obtained from the Misbegotten Crusader within the Cave of Forlorn. Oh look, another Misbegotten, how original. Kinda like Mog, Morgod, Margit, Mogwin. Need I say more? Yeah, anyways. This is near the inner consecrated snowfield site of Grace. You'll need both halves of the Halleck Tree secret medallion to reach this location, so by this point in the game, you should be well equipped to obtain this but it is definitely a blade for faith heavy builds as it requires 16 strength, 21 dexterity, and 28 faith. Just to use in all its functionality, but with its powerful weapon skill established order, you can make quick work from a distance of many enemies at the same time as it releases a golden explosion within the first input and sending out waves of golden light with repeated input. This is definitely a great new game plus farming weapon. And finally, onto the ninth and final legendary class armament in the lands between we have the bolt of grand Sax. yeah this lightning-like spear of zeus can be found in Landell, royal capital after beating godfrey first elden lord golden shade version i guess from the Erd Tree sanctuary grace walk outside to the west door take the elevator down jump down onto the giant spear lodged into the building from the northeast headed walkway past the two perfumers and then walk up to the spear you should see the spear shining on it Keep in mind this can only be obtained up until the defeating Malaketh in the crumbling Pharaoh Missoula. Once defeated, you'll have to wait until New Game Plus to start zapping your foes like a Greek god. Yeah. This weapon requires 40 dex, 20 strength to wield, making it a perfect weapon for more agile builds that wish to have some range and distance in their melee attacks, as well as using its weapon skill Ancient Lightning Spear to call forth the super powerful, super kill, cool, super radical power of a red dragon's lightning. All right, maybe not Zeus then. So to buff up and hurl at your foes for some epic damage in the right build. So there you have it, folks. Be sure to check out the links in the description for more Elden Ring videos, as well as the link in the pinned comment for my Elden Ring playlist. Until next time on STV, ladies and gentlemen, have fun with your new collection, and I'll see you on the next Elden Ring video. You know who it is. Yes.